Well, at least it gave me time to prove that I wasn't wrong, but I also wasn't right. About? The taillights on the standard. It's not mean? like the... It's not like the Road King, but it's also not like the Street Glide or Road Glide. It's actually a mixture of the two. Yeah, it's got the, what do they call them, the bullet style with the center tail light. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's try this again. So yeah, it's literally a mixture of both of them. <laughs> Which feels weird. Feels really weird. Why like not pick just one pick or the one. other? Yeah. Welcome to Between Two Wheels Podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and you all know my co-host, Justin Newlywed Bird, and Uncle Torpak and Ken. Today's episode is being sponsored by Get Lowered Cycles, your home for Harley parts, accessories, and all the gear you could possibly need for your bike. Today, we are talking about the history of the Electric Glide, the new Electric Glide standard, and Indian's all-new 2019 LE Roadmaster. What's going on, guys? Well, I'm, I'm married, I guess. Well, not technically, but if you're listening to this, I'm married. Yeah. <laughs> so, R.I.P. That's all right. Married life doesn't suck that bad. You get a great tax write-off. Do you? Do you? Yeah. yeah, but right. then I'll never see it, so yeah. well, <laughs> might as well not have one at all. <laughs> uh, Ken, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing all right. Yeah? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. before we start... This episode really off. Let's go ahead and let everyone know that Between Two Wheels Television is live on YouTube. You can find the link to the channel by heading over to BetweenTwoWheels.com, the two is spelled out T-W-O, and clicking on the YT link in the top right corner. All right, so Justin, you kind of ran with this one, so why don't you kick it off with the history of the electric line? So this was literally like a 10-minute Wikipedia slash HD forums dig because uh-huh. I knew nothing about the Electric Glide. Fair L- enough. Literally nothing. So I'm just taking little points that I, I found okay. that I found interesting and relevant to the topic. College professors love Wikipedia. Oh, yeah, they do. Well, yeah. the key is to cite their sites. Ah. So Wikipedia always cites their stuff on the bottom. Just copy those sites. Oh. Millennial Hack 2.0. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is don't cite Wikipedia go and cite their sources as the actual sources you Correct. use in your term paper. Well okay, done. college students, if you're listening, <laughs> Make there's a note. your hack. Make a note. <laughs> All right, Electric Glide history, let's go. All right, Electric Glide was originally introduced in 1965 as the first bike with an electric start, hence the name Electra. This bike came with no fairing and it also came with hard bags. Wait, so is this the first Harley with electric start or the first motorcycle with electric start? Do you know? I don't know. Uh, uh-huh. I would, I would venture to say the first Harley. I think okay. it was the first. Because we all know Harley's not technologically advanced. No. And that'd be a pretty big advance. They're definitely not leading the game. But this was 1965 when their technology was still relevant. So. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Yeah. Fair yeah. Enough. yeah. Accurate. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> all right. Um. So in 1966, uh, so 1965 was the only bike that had the pan head, I believe it was, and then th- the very next year they introduced the shovel head to uh, the line. Okay. Uh, 1969, uh, we saw <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the the Batwing fairing came uh, into the scene, but it wasn't standard. It was an add-on option. Okay. It had so to be added through the, fa- through the dealership. To help everyone listening understand, so right now, as of 1966 to 69, it was more like a Road King as we know it today, minus the saddlebags. No, it had the it had the hardbacks. It did have the hardbacks. Correct. It had no fairing, but it did come with hardbacks. Ah, gotcha. It didn't come with a windshield either. So think of Road King without a windshield. So Re- Road King standard, because those don't come with windshields from the factory. Oh, okay. I don't know what a Road King standard is. I've never or heard not of that. standard. I'm sorry. Special. special. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Road King special, but not blacked out. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so skip ahead 10 years, 1979, the Electric Glide Sport was introduced. Uh, this was the f- last one in the line that was not offered with a fairing standard. 
So it was still an option, but as of 1980, that's when they put on the Batwing fairing standard. Okay. So that's what the bike came with. Uh, Skip ahead even more. 1994 is when the Road King becomes its own separate option. I Mm -hmm. guess that since they pretty much took the Electroglide and then stripped its fairing back and separated that bike into the Road King that we know today. Okay. So, so the older the older electric glides and the road king we know today are essentially the same thing. Okay. But between 1982, I guess today, the electric glide standard and all the other electric glides have the fairing already on it. Okay. Fair enough. Um, and then 1995 was the 30th anniversary. It was also the first one to be the li- first Harley to be available with optional fuel injection. Hmm. Oh really? Yep. But that was uh, pretty interesting. It took them nine years to make it almost standard. Well, actually, 2005, I think, is when it went standard to fuel injection. Yeah, across the board. Yeah, yeah. because 2000, I think it was 2002, they switched what brand or what manufacturer of fuel injector they were using. And then, uh, yeah, they made it standard in 05, I believe. Um, but I think that the reason that the history of the electric glide is so important is because this was news to me uh, like i said i knew nothing about the electric glide but pretty much all of the touring lineup that we have in harley davidson today spawned off of the electric glide the electric glide was basically the first touring bike yeah. of harley and now we've got you know the uh, the electric glide deluxe and all that stuff we've got a couple different variants of it which is i mean the reason we're talking about it today uh, but yeah, all the variants like the Electric Glide Classic, the Road Glide Ultra, Street Glide Special, Ultra Limited Low, etc. All those variations of the touring breed of Harleys that branched off of the Electric Glide as its evolution started back in 1965. Wow. Okay. And there's your history lesson. Well, there we go. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, how many emails are we going to get saying that everything I just said was wrong? <laughs> hey, we used Wikipedia, and the internet cannot lie. Yeah, Actually, most of that came from HD forums. So. That's definitely factual <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah. So the reason this is being brought up today on this episode is because this week Harley announced the 29 Electric Glide Standard. Sorry, the what? The who? 2019. There oh, we go. Okay. That's shit. I'm, I'm tired, y'all. <laughs> I say, that wasn't English. <laughs> uh, they introduced the 2019 Electric Glide Standard. Oh, yes. And... What kills me is a lot of people were like, oh, it's a brand new model. No. Nope. nope it's no. not. But, uh, so some specs. You want me to go over it or you want to go over it? You can go over it and then I'll just correct you when you're wrong. All right. So, <laughs> when you're looking at it, it looks pretty much like a street glide, but it has no stereo. Correct. It does not have factory or st- standard ABS. It's an option. Correct. And it comes in black. And only black. <laughs> I've heard that might be changing. Okay. There, there's nothing to confirm that, but I've heard just from rumors on the interwebs that that's, that might be changing. Well, I so think they should just keep it straight black, because I think that's kind of funny. Because yeah. not only that, but it doesn't have badges on it. It just has that, that, I don't know if it's painted or if it's just a vinyl decal soft on the side. It doesn't it's have... It's clear-coated over, I think. Yeah, so it doesn't have the actual badges like the yeah, other bikes it's do. It's a clear-coated <laughs> over... Uh, I, I want to say it's a, a vinyl decal. Yeah. It's so it's around. got a sticker on it. Yeah. So it has the Road King special style tail lights, but it also has a center light. Is that what you were saying? No, it it has the combina- it has the Road King center light, uh-huh. but it has the Street Glider Road Glide bullet lights on the side. Okay. So the Road King has the big disc lights on the back. Mm-hmm. The, the pancakes. The, correct. And the... Um, this bike we're talking about now, the Electric Glide Standard, has the Road King big fat eraser tail light, mm-hmm. like on the Ultras and the Road King, but it has the bullet style um, turn signals, like okay. on the Road Glide or the Street Glide. And this one comes with a solo seat. Do you think that's going to be a, a deal breaker? No. No? Ah, I really don't. I really don't either. Well, we all know Harley seats suck. Correct. So the number one thing most people do is get a new seat if they're not weekend riders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if they put any real miles on their bike, that's usually one of the first upgrades they're going to do. Yep. And at that uh, point, you can add a, a, a two-up seat. I didn't get to see this on the pictures. I'm curious if it has passenger floorboards. It does not. It does not. It does not? No. Okay. Well, that's another thing you'd have to add. So if you want a passenger, you're going to have to get a seat and passenger floorboards. Or pegs. Or pegs. Yeah. So you look at another, you know, a, a 
a decent seat from Harley's, probably 250 at least starting. And then the pegs and the mounts, another 200 bucks. Another, yeah. yeah. Um, ABS is an added option, but it's an $800 option. Oh, yeah. oh, it does not come in standard. Okay. And security is standard, but it's not the alarm. It's just the fob. Yeah. It does have cruise control, though. Yes. I know that yes. was one thing a lot of people were confused with. It does have the cruise control. Yeah. So they're they're keeping with standard cruise control across all touring models now. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's at least nice. Uh, no LED lights. Nope. Not at, at all. all. So these not are... The, not even the headlight. No. But... The Road King, uh, the regular Road King, doesn't have LED lights. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's a it is a well, is it really a place to cut the? Costs? I don't think the Road King Special has an LED light because I I'm almost certain no, that's one of the things don't. I complained about in my review video. The Road King Special has the Daymaker headlight, but all the turn signals are bulb. Yeah. And actually, so are the at least on the 2018. I don't think that's the on a, the 2018 Road Glide Special. I know the Road Glide is. The Road King, I don't believe, had... Because I almost... I'm positive I made that comment on if I'm going to get the special mm-hmm. that I would have liked the upgraded headlight. But well, Tracy's bike I'll has a Daymaker. That. From the factory? Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't add that. Um, but... So no LEDs. Only black and only the 107. They don't have the, the larger motor for it. And no, and no option. Yeah, no option for it. Which, yeah. huh. let's... It makes sense because as soon as you want that... Was it the 114? You're now moving into Street Glide Street Special. Special or your Ultra Limited, yep. whatever it is. Uh, also has no hill shifter and no passenger setup. Yep. So hmm. there is that. <laughs> so let's let's roll into thoughts. Ken, what are your thoughts? I, mean, I think it's great. Oh, I thought you were talking about Instagram thoughts. You got me excited. Oh. All right, never mind. Carry on. No, no, no. I, I think it's great. This is going to be the perfect bike to get. What I see is a younger crowd into the touring line. It's coming in at 18. So the dresser touring side, not yeah. just the bagger. Yeah, not just okay. the bagger, but but really the, the dresser one where you can fully dress it up. It, you can put the full tour pack on it, everything. But a lot of the people that we talk with, the, the younger guys, typically, you know, they're, they're always saying, well, if I wanted, you know, I don't want, you know, the stereo and the GPS. I want to hear my motor and... And the wind. Mm-hmm. Well, th- this bike gives you that, and it gives you a... It's a full touring bike. Yeah. It gives you all the... all. Well, according to Harley's website, everything you need nothing and nothing more. Don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I agree with you. Uh, when this was an option back in 2008, this is the bike I was looking at. Because I looked at the cost of the Street Glide, and I saw the cost of this one. I was like, well, I, I just get this one upgrade as I wanted. Now, the key here is I wanted the ability to add my own stereo because the Harman Kardon system back then was garbage. And hell, I even had a marine-grade CD player picked out from Crutchfield. So it was a single-den setup, so it was perfect. Uh, Now, I am not a purist by any means. I love my creature comforts like stereo and GPS. And and I, I know we all have Bluetooth, like in our helmets and stuff. But back then, helmets were optional for me. And oh, yeah. The vast majority of the time, I didn't ride with a helmet on. So I didn't have the the option to have my headset. Oh, yeah. So I, wa- I wanted to be able to jam out because back then I was really a long-haul rider. So being able to just to zone out, jam out to some music, and just ride... That was my way of clearing my my mind. I didn't care about having the you know hearing the wind and my motor because the exhaust is exiting out the back of the bike. It's not right there next to me, so mm-hmm. I didn't really give a shit about that. Um, but also back then, you had a passenger setup. You had the pegs, you had the pillion pads or the two up seat, and the you had the heel and toe shifter, I believe. And you had three colorways. You had black, uh, red, and blue. And those are the three options you had for the Electric Glide standard. Uh, but one of the things I didn't like about the ones back then compared to what they have today, back then the entire drivetrain was silver. That mm. really gross silver. Oh. Now it's black. 
So I think they've gotten rid of the silver drivetrain coming off the assembly line. I think it's all the wrinkle black now because I haven't seen any silver motors or transmissions at all uh, in a couple of years. Expe- no. Well, in the touring family. Not even CVOs. No. No. And so that's something I do like because I like having a blacked out motor and all mm-hmm. that. So for me back then, I, I looked at that as, okay, I'm going to have to go and upgrade all this stuff or, or have it sent yeah. out for powder coat and all that. So that was kind of my yeah. way of looking at it. And I, I loved it because that was that was the poor man's bike to get into a fairing touring bike. That's yeah. what you were saying. And, and I, really, I really think that that's going to bring... I mean, not like massive numbers. It's not like it's going to save the company from extinction or anything like no. that. But it's going to bring in, I think, a fair deal of riders. Especially with the option to add a, a stereo later on. And you don't even have to put in the boom. I mean, it's ready for the boom. Right. You know, 2500 bucks to get it installed. <laughs> you know. Uh, but, but, but honestly, why would you? Well, I mean, if you know... So for, for anyone who uses Android phone, I, I would go aftermarket. So then you can use your GPS through the head the head unit, and well, you know yeah, how to I mean, deal with it. So it's coming in at nineteen thousand. That that twenty five hundred is twenty one five. But that Boom Audio System upgrade is still with that, and the bike is still cheaper than a, a Street Glide Special or a Road Glide Special, or even the Electric Glides. That have that same head unit. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you're getting the the new GTS. Yeah. GTS GTX. I, don't I think know. it's GTS. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember. But so yeah, I, I get it. But why would you upgrade to something that is better than nothing, but still not the best, and you're still paying a premium cost for it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where if you're going to be tearing out the, uh, you know, taking apart the Batwing and digging in there. Go with something that is better. Now, the other side of that, too, is the boombox system is waterproof from the factory. Yes, guaranteed waterproof. And there's not a lot of double-din yeah. head units that are marine-grade. And when I say marine-grade, these are for boats. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, I haven't not seen crayon a lot. Eaters. <laughs> oh, God. Hmm? So not crayon eaters. Yeah, no. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Poor jarheads. Uh, <laughs> so... So there's ours. What about you, Bird? I think that this has been the best move that Harley's done in the past three or four years. Why? Because you've got three big pieces of the pie right now as far as the touring market that has been left untouched. That is younger riders, Mm -hmm. particularly in the millennial generation, that like you said, don't want the GPS. They don't want the music. Everything they run off their phones, they they use headphones. They run the GPS on their phones, on a, on a phone mount. They don't want that. You also have the performance baggers, more popular than they've ever been. And, I mean, you're getting to see some pretty serious builds. Right. You're talking about Steve Chamberlain up in Michigan or somewhere up, up north, put a 124 kit in that thing. Yeah. He's right. custom fabbing pieces for the side to make it slimmer. Like, these are some serious builds, putting down some serious power that are capable of just awesome performance bagger things. And then, of course, we have the market that we've seen since, you know, the early 2000s is the custom bagger. The big wheels, the fancy mm-hmm. paint, the air ride suspension. The custom stereo systems and all exactly. that stuff. Exactly. And the three things that those have in common is they don't want, one, to spend a lot of money on the bike up front. And two, they're not going to use that infotainment system at all. Right. You talk about millennial generations. I already kind of touched on it. They're going to use their phone. The performance baggers, they don't give a shit. They want that bike to be as light as possible. So if it's a serious build, some of them pull it out because you're saving 50 50 pounds probably once you take the amp and everything out. Oh, yeah. The speakers. Yeah. The head unit, the amp. And then you've got the custom bagger guys who rip all that shit out right off the bat and put their own Mm -hmm. louder stuff in there. Yeah. Higher end stuff. So to give them an option, you're basically giving them a blank canvas. Yeah. This is essentially the street bob of the touring market. Yeah. Because if you're wanting to build something cool or something unique or you're not going to use everything else that the other models offer, you're getting to save. I mean, it's coming in under the Road King yeah. for a fairing touring bike. 
And then not even to mention, this is a completely separate pie. Just all those people who are, you know, maybe don't have the best credit or <laughs> don't want the, the stereo at all or just want a touring frame and a touring motor mm-hmm. that just want to do a long haul type stuff. Like you said, it's an entry level tour under $19,000. Yeah. It's dipping into that price point of the competitors, even the, the competitors we see overseas in both the European and the Japanese markets. Yep. Yeah. So low cost of entry, highly customizable, and for those guys who don't want the stereo system, they now have a pretty decent cubby hole that they can put stuff in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not only that, but it's just nice to have another option besides the Road King. Yeah. Because let's, let's face it. I mean, a lot of people were saying, well, if at this price, I would just get a, a Road King and, and put another fairing on it, which don't get me wrong. I think that would still look better because at that point you have something that not everyone else has, but you're in another two or three grand at the least. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's talking cheap paint and one and of the cheapest fairings out there. Yeah. You're still looking at, I mean, two to three grand at that point you're up in the street glide road glide prices. Yep. Yeah. So why even go that route? Why even go that route? Well, the detachability. But most of those fairings aren't detachable. When you're talking about like the, heavy. the RWG fairings, those mm-hmm. ones that look really cool, those aren't detachable. Oh, they're bolted straight they're on. They're bolted straight on. Or welded in some cases. So mm-hmm. Okay. So Okay, I, I again I'm a, I really like the concept of going back and giving the entry level bike well what am i call the dresser the entry mm-hmm. level dresser uh but yeah i mean look you buy a road king because it doesn't have a fairing you want that bar hopper style yep. that you can still go out and ride up to the mountains or in our case the hill country and have fun but still have a sleek bike to play on yeah and but if you want a fairing, if you want to get out there and do longer rides, you're getting in there. And is this actually cheaper than the Road King? Yes. Yep. Was it about like 500 bucks? Like Ish. six, five or six, yeah. Okay. So. Still cheaper. It is. <laughs> and you're getting more. I agree. Oh, I yeah. Think that, it's, I think bang for buck is still up, better. Yeah. Because you're getting all the extra gauges. You That's know. true. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. You do get the extra Road gauges. King, you only get one gauge. Yeah. You, sh- you got your speedometer, and then it's got... Is it a digital fuel gauge, or... No. Is it the... It's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, the tank-mounted... Tank-mounted The cap one. one, I think. Yeah. It's... It's stupid. Tra- yeah, so I had to get- replace Tracy's. Yeah, so you're getting all the street glide, you know, road glide gauges. Yeah. I didn't even think about that, yeah. And you have the option to go in and add something later, yeah. if you choose. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, granted, it doesn't, it doesn't come with... You know, like you said, the the one fourteen or something like that. But I mean, you know, you throw you, one guy. I watched if, one video on it. You could go stage four and still be under the street what, glide special. What the street glide street glide specials yeah. are. Yeah. The the one fourteen, unless you're building a performance bike, is not worth it. No. I've said that time and time again. No. You do stop do, at stage three. Yep. Yeah. You do. You almost two. never. Like I could not feel the difference on the the big bikes. Yeah. On the smaller soft tails, yes, it's there. Yeah. Not as noticeable as you might think. Um, but, I mean, the main reason that people get the 114s, it's easier to build on later. So, unless you're b- planning on building that bike up to a high-performance motor, the 107 is more than enough. Yeah. I mean, w- what was the gain? 18 at the uh, the crank? 18 oh. horsepower? Eight, or it was I don't even think it's that much. No, it wasn't even that much. No? I want to say it was like <laughs> under 15. Yeah. Okay, so 15-ish. At the crank, so you're seeing maybe seven, eight at the wheel. Yeah, yep. it was... And that's that's not going to be enough to fill on a 900-pound motorcycle. No. Nope. So, yeah. Now, on the, on the lighter bikes, oh, yeah, yeah. You'll notice I it. definitely felt it. Yeah, yeah, the power per pound matters. But I still don't think that the power per dollar is worth it. True. Well, sta- Unless, stage one, stage two is the... Best bang for the buck. For sure. Intake exhaust, chip, or computer, and a cam. Yep. That's all you need. Yep. And you'll have more power than you'll probably know what to do with 
for at least six months or so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I used to want a stage four until I started to look at it mm -hmm. and the type of writing that I do. Yep. It, yeah. it would just, never get touched? It, it wouldn't, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm rarely above 3,000, 4,000 RPMs. And that's what I say on the 114. I would say probably about 55% of Harley's rider base could even use that power. Yeah. Effectively. You mean all the old people? Oh, yeah. Damn old, damn old people. <laughs> I mean, the people that are going to ride those bikes and actually use that power band and take advantage of it. I don't think there's enough skilled riders out there to do it. <laughs> just just saying. <laughs> but I, th I think, yeah. That's why I, I shouldn't I drink on the podcast. I start saying mean things. <laughs> I absolutely love it. The price is excellent. Yep. I do think they should come with a few few color options. Like you said, the the black, the blue, and the red. Yeah. You know, that'll get a few more people, you know. But, you know, in true Harley fashion, that'll be an, an extra $200 or $500. Oh, it'll definitely be $500, yep. Mm -hmm. Which, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're still getting it for the cost of a Road King. Yep, for a fairing and, bike. And you're getting more. And I have to say, really, the only thing that I, that looking at the bike as it is now, the only thing that I really dislike about it mm -hmm. is the the center compartment. The cubby. The cubby. <laughs> the glove box. It it doesn't have box. <laughs> it doesn't have a lid on it. It doesn't mm -hmm. have a cover. If they would have just put a cover on it. Well so it that's the same setup that the police bikes that the for the departments that go with the electric lights. Yeah, but a lot of those police departments they rip that up and put a radio there. We're right, but they still have that little slot underneath it, and that's their little cubby for that. I don't know if anyone ever uses it, but it's still there on the police bikes. I mean, I guess you could put your pen there. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you get off, throw your <laughs> stuff, your gloves in there. <laughs> that's literally all I could think about putting yeah. in there. I mean, I wouldn't leave my phone in there. Nope. No. If it even fits. Yeah, but it it's there. I think as a teaser. Hey, you should upgrade that area. So they're going to have something that you can put in there to make it shinier or make it something stupid. $75 block off plate. E exactly. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it will say electric light on it. Can we get some beads? Some beads. Like 70s beads, you know? <laughs> That's sway back and yeah. forth. <laughs> well, Only if it has the... And when they all line the, up, they got like a naked lady on or there. Or fucking Mona Lisa. Mona, yeah, there you go. <laughs> God. All right. Let's, uh, let's let our... Take a listeners quick break. Listen, listeners know about what uh, we have in store for them from Get Lowered. You've heard us talking about Get Lowered cycles on many of our episodes. And now we have partnered with Get Lowered to give you BW... Wow, there <laughs> wow. it is. B hey, Drunky McDrunkerson. <laughs> <laughs> to give the B2W... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. B2W listeners something extra. When you spend $100 or more, Get Lowered will hook you up with a free Get Lowered shirt. All I have to do is head over to GetLower.com, choose the parts and gear you need, and when you check out, use the coupon code B2WPODCAST and put your shirt size in the notes section. Wow, it's a very simple script. Yeah. <laughs> You're the one to talk, <laughs> dickhole. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the stress, I, man. I just want to say, I was going to give you a compliment on that top one because... I made it through it? He made it through it, but he changed words on it even. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, man. Changing it up, throwing a curveball Only in took there. 21 episodes. <laughs> He's starting to get the hang of it. <laughs> getting ballsy, folks. Getting ballsy. Uh, all right, so... Speaking of getting ballsy... Let's Indian. Yeah, let's yeah. let's talk about Oh my god, for real. <laughs> let's talk about this. <laughs> uh, limited edition Roadmaster Elite. Roadmaster. Roadmaster. Roadhouse. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> who wants to kick us off on this one? <laughs> I, I I'll Not say it. it. I'll be quick. <laughs> I think it's stupid as shit. Yeah. <laughs> but I know they're going to sell all of them. All 200 of them. They're going to sell them all. I mean, and that and that's irritating because it comes in at what thirty six, thirty nine, thirty seven, thirty seven thousand dollars. I'll read the the quick limited synopsis edition here. Roadmaster Elite for thirty seven thousand dollars. With only two hundred available, the limited edition Roadmaster Elite pairs modern touring amenities with iconic Indian motorcycle styling. The twenty nineteen model also boasts many ex exclusive premium features, including a hand painted, custom inspired design along with top-of-the-line premium amenities. 
like a 600 watt stereo system. That's so dumb. Well, so well, and and <laughs> but it has and, real gold in the real paint, guys. Gold leaf <laughs> emblems. <laughs> Motherfuckers, <laughs> and they're gonna sell all 200 of these bastards. You know it. Well, they sell out of the Roadmaster every year. Yeah, they sell every one they make. What, all 50 of them. Yeah. But but they're but here's the thing. They're all hand painted. They all have gold inlay in it. I don't give a shit. I was like, I don't care. I, and I'm not. I'm, let's preface this, guys, that we're not Indian haters by no, any means. No. Anything, <laughs> we're probably more on the other side of the spectrum. Look, if I want something hand painted, I want someone like. The guys at Fast Life. Yeah, I want Jace from Fast Life doing it. You know, I don't, I don't want the bullshit two tone paint with I don't gold want some leaf. No name in, in at India. I love how they say custom inspired. Custom inspired by what? You're gonna have two hundred, <laughs> one hundred and ninety nine other people with the exact same, bike exact same color, except for theirs is probably gonna have you know one ninety eight, <laughs> one ninety nine yeah. pencil yeah. a different number. Yeah. Well, it's hand paint, so the guy could have a little bit of a twitch. Oh man, if he's <laughs> one of one, guys, <laughs> one of one. <laughs> So, additional premium amenities unique to the Roadmaster Elite include leather passenger armrests, spacious billet aluminum rider and passenger floorboards, a premium touring console, billet aluminum pinnacle mirrors, and chrome bumpers. Chrome bump? Fuck it. You sold me. Sold. Have you, seen, have you seen how many lights are on the front end of this? At least you'll be seen. Because <laughs> you, you got one got, in the you got tip. Your I think you got two in the fender because yeah, doesn't yeah, the, the bottom the corner and the Indian, the Indian head, head they both light up. Yeah. Yes. Your main headlight, your two running light fog lights, and then the two and things then on the side. And then two I think those are turn signals. Turn signals. But even today, you know, we're talking about the the history of the electric light. I wonder what what company was the first one to completely rip off the Batwing fairing design. Mm, mm. That's a great question. I well, we're looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> so it is it right. is a blatant I feel bamboozled. <laughs> <laughs> it is a blatant ripoff. But I will say that all the premium amenities which really come on the stock touring bikes from Indian, it is a better stereo. It is It's got a lot of better tech than Harley. Yes. Let's just blanket statement that. Well, I mean, does, it, does the does windshield it, yeah, you know, you say it's got the it's got an electric windshield. Yeah, for crying it goes out up loud. and down. So. Push button power windshield, heated hand grips, keyless ignition, remote locking saddlebags, okay, which I think is those are awesome. so freaking dope. Yeah. I love playing with those things. Yeah, yeah. Let me unlock it. Doot, doot. <laughs> I'll say the the power windshield and the remote locking bags are yeah. the two big things that Indian has. Well, and, it, and it locks the whole bike. The whole yeah. Bike. So even that uh, that torque pack that they have on the back, yeah, it's also all connected. Yeah, and when you lock it, it shuts off your bike, so that's your security. Yeah, yep. it has thirty seven gallons of storage space. That's a lot of milk. <laughs> I can't remember what the the ultras are at. I think it's twenty seven hundred cubic inches total. Well, on Harley, it's it's in gallons as well. Is it? Yeah, give me keep keep talking, guys. So I'm, it only comes in one color. One. Wildfire red candy over black crystal with real 24 karat gold leaf badging. <laughs> uh, come on. And it takes nearly 30 hours to complete, and it's finished by hand. Well, that's all paint. Wait. You, if you read that statement, it's finished. I like me a finished by hand. By hand. <laughs> that's that. So the entire bike's not hand painted, so. <laughs> <laughs> that gold leaf. They got, they got to do the gold leaf by hand. Well, <laughs> it's it's gold leaf badges. Yeah, but they still got to still got to do that by hand. <laughs> Peel off that uh, 3M sticky tape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I you know I I like what you said earlier. I like Indian as a company. I think they do a lot to push the heavyweight cruiser market. They really do. But this is fucking retarded. And here's my take on it. It does not have a superior motor. Nope. It doesn't have that seventh gear because <laughs> lately I've oh, been man. searching for a seventh yep, gear. Same. So you're giving things that I don't know people actually give a shit about. Yep. I, I see this being the really old guy dentist. You know, <laughs> psychologist. Someone, someone's got <laughs> a psychologist. He said dentist. How? Why was that so accurate? <laughs> just. I just feel like I mean this is exactly what it's aimed at. It's, got, it's aimed mm-hmm. at people with fuck you money. I mean, it really is. They're, it's gonna, These are going to be kept in garages. You know, it's going to be their their babies. 
you know, and people talk shit about Harley riders, you know, only ride on the weekends. I mean, this one screams that. Yeah. By the way, it, the, this uh, is like the CVO, really. This is worse than the CVO. I mean, okay, wait, just, but it's got the same freaking uh, motor. But I love the name of their motor, the Thunderstroke. Yeah. Okay, Ooh. come on. That's what I Why did does this that weekend. sound so sexual? <laughs> <laughs> the Thunderstroke 111. Yeah, the Thunderstroke has finished my hand, and oh. it has 119 <laughs> foot-pounds of torque. But that's not for just the Roadmaster Elite. That's all the Across Roadmaster. The all line. their touring yeah. lines have that same. Yeah, so you're not getting a better Thunderstroke motor. motor. Yeah, you're not getting a better motor for. That that extra like ten thousand dollars essentially. Okay, if you look at the seat though, it's pretty. I mean, it's a nice looking seat. It, it, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and give it the benefit of the doubt and say it is a hand stitched, but the stitching is it's a two tone seat and I do like that look. So it, it looks. I don't like the studs. Other than that, I like it. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the side studs. Look, it's not a bad looking bike. I would if it was given to me. In I this would category. I would ride it. Right, I but mean, it. It's just it's it's one of, it's it's one of those things where it's it's someone with fuck you money, or you know who's <laughs> someone who is hoping to get a collector's item because it's a limited run of two hundred. And I I get that that's gonna push the cost up some, but is this a thirty seven thousand bike? How much is a fully decked out non CVO? Oh, non CVO. Keep, keep okay. it in the same lineup because this is same engine this, lineup. The CVO. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you what made you think that it was not the CVO. That makes sense. So yeah, if we're looking at it, the CVO has an upgrade motor, correct, and gearing and all that stuff. So yeah. this does not have that. So how much does that ultra classic limited or whatever cost? The ultra limited costs twenty eight thousand eighty nine dollars. So is that like, the most expensive non CVO correct ultra? Okay. So for almost ten thousand dollars more. Right. Outside the trikes, yes. Okay, so ten grand more you're getting better electronics, mm -hmm. better, better technology. Um, yeah, bigger stereo. And you're getting that windshield. Now that that windshield and the electric locks things. and the electric locks eh. and the heated grips because I don't believe that's stock on the ultras. Okay, I, I know I've talked a lot of shit so. about heated grips, but on this trip to Galveston this last weekend, I really would have kind of liked them. <laughs> 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 Not gonna lie. Oh, I take it back. It does have heated hand grips. <laughs> uh, oh, I, the ultra limited has heated hand grips. That makes sense. Okay. So, it doesn't have that power power wind or power windshield. No, nope. nope. and it doesn't have the extra four hundred lights. True. <laughs> yeah, or that dope Indian head on the fender. So they're uh, big also the the Indian has about one point five gallons more of storage space. I just I did the math and I wanted people to know. Eh. Okay, yeah. so in essence, it's the same carrying space. Very, very similar. You might be able to fit, like, maybe another T-shirt or two. Yeah. Okay. So well, a, a gallon, that's actually pretty big. So it says it starts at thirty six nine nine nine. Well, because yeah. there's a bunch of performance upgrades uh, you can do. All that right there. You can, <laughs> you know, they have a stage one exhaust, a stage one performance air intake uh, the Thunderstroke Stage 2 Performance Cam. Quit calling it that, God. And the 116 Stage 3 Big Board Kit. But yeah, the Harley only has a 25-watt sound system. What? Not, really? not a 600 watt? Not 600 watts. Oh. Well, now, hold on. It's 25 20 watts per speed. channel. Yeah. But it well, doesn't say how many channels it has. It'd be four. It'd be four. four. So, I, I don't think 200. It comes, I don't think it comes with a stock with the... Uh, saddlebag no. speakers. It doesn't. It has the ones on the passenger, though. Now, this one has well, that'd be six, six speakers. Where so are you getting the other one from? Well, you have the two speakers in the... Uh, oh, those are speakers? Yeah. That's okay. where they house their speakers. And then you have the two saddlebag speakers. Gotcha. Okay. So they're 100 watts per channel. Yep. And the Ultra Limited does not have them in the saddlebags. Yep. So... Yeah, that's a CVO only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, is that worth $10,000? I don't think so. And, I mean, even if we're looking at the... Because that, that price I gave for Harley was in vivid black. So, your two-tone custom color is around $30,000. I mean, that the, the Indian 
in depth that screen is and stuff amazing it's pretty <laughs> awesome i do like their push start yes i agree so you don't have to fiddle fuck with anything. I gotta say though, look at it, looking at it overall, that is not an appealing dash to me. No, it, it looks like uh, the layout looks funny. It's very funky. It almost feels like a square-headed Mickey Mouse. It looks like uh, <laughs> one of the robots from Futurama. <laughs> yeah, the, the eyes. Yeah. There's oh a, shit! Like, now like, I see yeah, it. Yeah, Damn see? it! Once you see it, you can't, can't be unseen. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a. Arr. He's got two little cheeks. Look at him. <laughs> those black buttons are his teeth. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But, you know... Oh, were those comments down below? Oh, it yeah. was comments. Let's yeah. read some of these. Oh, Ooh, Dirty, dirty, dirty Bob. Bob. <laughs> Too much trash on that bike. An engine is all I need. Well, you, you need a frame. I, you need transmission, wheels, tires, all that stuff, too. Yeah. But I get it. But he also... It looks like he rides a 2016 uh, FX Street Bob. That's a, that's a Street Bob, yeah. With a 103. Nude. 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 Oh, he rides it nude. He rides it nude, or is his bike nude? Or is it a naked Harley? You're making street Bob owners look bad, Dirty Bob. Please stop doing <laughs> so, this. Anyways. Oh, look right here. Got a blue 2018 Elite for 27K new. Yeah. So, so they're yeah. even oh, p- compared to their own bikes, it's another 10 grand. Yeah. So, well, we all know that they keep, they try to keep their pricing points pretty equal to Harley. Yeah, they have to. So. This it's just a limited edition run with a couple stereo upgrades and a really flashy paint. Yeah, a custom know. paint job that's finished by hand. Yeah. So I, God damn it. you know, it's, <laughs> I can't hear it now. <laughs> it is for people with money who want something that is limited run. Yep, I agree. It, yeah. It's it's kind of like when Harley every five years they do their anniversary editions you're paying extra money for some badges and that's all you're getting out of it and exactly. usually a custom paint that goes with Color, that badge yep, yep. And, so, and hand numbering yeah <laughs> oh god hand numbering <laughs> god <laughs> all right so number me by hand baby <laughs> let's go ahead and move into final thoughts so let's start with the electric glide oh god where do we start oh yeah history of the electric glide I guess I'm going. Okay. Yeah. Um, you started talking first. Sorry. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, I think it's, I th- like I said at the beginning of the episode, uh, learning the brief history of the Electric Glide was pretty awesome. I didn't realize that it had that much of a, like, grassroots within the touring series. I think the 2019 Electric Glide standard is a amazing bike, and I think it's really going to up the sales of the new touring bikes. And the Indian is stupid and inexpensive, and I don't like it, and I don't Accurate. want it. <laughs> Way too much chrome. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> All right, Ken. Uh, I think the uh, Electric Guide Standard is just an excellent comeback. Yeah. Uh, I think this will help Harley, hopefully uh, keep their numbers up, uh, hopefully get us some more riders. I mean, yeah. honestly, mm-hmm. I don't care if you're riding a Harley or not, but, you know, we need more riders. Uh Though, we didn't touch on this, they're killing off two bikes. Are they? Yeah, they're killing off the Limited Low and the Ultra Classic. Huh. I don't know which ones those are. I know the Limited Low is the Cause just the lower version of the Limited. But yeah. yeah. And so then the Ultra Classic is a stripped down Ultra. That's yeah. what my dad has, right? I don't know. Does he have... A <laughs> I don't know why I'm asking He's you He's your guys. dad. <laughs> We don't know that. We well, seen so it, are they killing off the Ultra Classic, or so are they killing off the so they're killing yeah Electric they're, Glide no, Classic? They're killing off the Ultra Classic and the Ultra Limited Low. Okay. So, so the Electric Glide Ultra Classic. Yeah, yes, that yeah. is the one my dad has, yeah. and the Ultra Limited Low. So they're only going to have two. Th- well, they'll have. So there's, there's four now, with including the standard. There's four. Yeah, so uh, they're, they're just going to have the Electric Glide standard. Standard. And the Limited. Yep. And then the other Batwing bike would, of course, be the Street Glides. Correct. So, okay, so they're they're cutting back some models and making way for a entry level. Which I'm totally okay with because, like, those those two bikes, are, let's, let's face it, those are geezer glides. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. they really, really, yeah. really kind of are. Do you, th- do you think they'll ever do something like a, uh, a Road Glide standard? Oh, man. That, I just don't know. I'm literally spilling the fence. And I don't know how that would look with the fairing. I mean, well, they, yeah. just put a, they just put a cubby where the stereo is. <laughs> I mean, 
if you're going to do that, it'd actually be kind of cool to do a relocator kit for your speedo and tack to be able to put those up in where that stereo would be. So then it's more in line, and then you oh, go with a okay, standard, so yeah. clamp, standard yeah. clamping system. Yeah, so yeah, that would look good. I'm just curious if the R&D for those pieces would kind of offset them their profit for selling at a lower price. Because I think that's what saved their asses on this, is because there really wasn't that much R&D to do on the street. <laughs> Th- there because, was none. Yeah, let's, exactly. Let's take, every, like, let's let's take some shit off. They basically, they basically <laughs> took the fairing bike. from the 2013 and just didn't put the speakers of the stereo yeah. in it. <laughs> well, like I was saying, though, that is a police bike. Yeah. yeah. Jim, Jim got a promotion. <laughs> New ideas, guys. Let's bring back an old bike. <laughs> So, all right. So I'm I'm right there with you guys. Uh, I love the idea of the ultra standard, and, or the electric light standard, and I'm okay with them killing off two other electric lights that probably do not sell. I, I don't oh, yeah. imagine the 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 limited low. It's three quarters of an inch lower. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's three quarters because uh, when I went and test rode a bunch yeah. of bikes at Green, Hasso did it right. Yeah, Hasso. He wants one of the the limited lows. Wow. Because he's short and he needs platform shoes, and we talked with the, the dealer there. One eight seven in progress. <laughs> we talked with the dealer there, and he's like, "Yeah, I mean, it's really only like three quarters of an inch to an inch lowered." Oh my god! Which you can just buy a, new shocks. A, a, new shocks. Even your or preload can get kit. an inch in, out of it. Like, wow. <laughs> All right. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Between Two Wheels podcast. Be sure to head over to www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out TWO to check out the show notes for this and all of our episodes. Links to our social media and YouTube and the link to our Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate. On behalf of the Between Two Wheels crew, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you suck. Then be someone better. Peace.